Okay, listen. I'm going to read from Mark chapter 5, verse 1 till 20. I'll repeat. Mark chapter 5, verse 1 till 20. And it reads, And they came over onto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadare Venice. And when he came out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because he, that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mouth of a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And for which Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out, and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand, and were choked in the sea. And they fed, and fed so the swine fled, and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and saw him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw him told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he may be with him. How big Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell, how, tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. Okay, this is one big piece. Now, I'm going to now I'm going to Matthew chapter eight, verse twenty-eight till thirty-four. I'll repeat Matthew chapter eight, verse twenty-eight till thirty-four. And it reads, And when he was come to the other side, into the country of the Gargenesis, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass pass by that Wait. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them, and heard of many swine feeding. So the devil besought them, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were came out, Come out, they went into the herd of swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place, place into the sea, and perished in the waters. And they that kept them fled, and went into their, their ways unto the city, and told everything, and what was befallen to the possessed of the devils. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coasts. Now, I just finished reading this account of, of the garrison possessed men from both the book of Mark and the book of Matthew. In the book of Matthew, Matthew is recording two possessed individuals, while the book of Mark focuses only on one. Well, there were two possessed individuals, however, the book of Mark, Mark focuses on one of them. However, there were two. But I'm not going to talk about the possessed men 
that much in this video about the fact that they had thousands of spirits in them because allegiance is between 2,000 and 10,000 demons. So what I'm going to talk about is, you know, people often, you know, avoid solutions. They avoid improvement or, no, no, let me say it better. I'm sorry. People often refuse and resist deliverance. Yes, humans, especially sinners, unfortunately sometimes also born again Christians do this, but generally people resist deliverance. And now just think about this. Those men that were possessed, they were heavily possessed. The, the people in that area, remember, that was on the Roman rule, so the mayor and all others in that, in that area could not control these men. They were out of control and they would attack people that were on their way over there. So this was a social problem, you know, that affected the whole society over there. However, nobody had any power to do anything about it, so they would just avoid the issue. And you need to understand this. A lot of humans, a lot of people have pride. They don't want to admit when they don't have control upon something. So when they cannot control something, when they cannot, by their own strength, by their own effort, solve anything or come with a solution, you will just avoid it. They will make something taboo. Or if something is too painful to deal with, they will just make it a taboo. You just don't speak about it. They just avoid it. You know? And um, these men were tied of taboo. However, when Jesus, when Jesus came, you know, it was quite strange because the boat landed near a cemetery. And now think about it. You know, nobody just goes to a cemetery, especially not to that cemetery because there you had those two demon-possessed individuals that were running like crazy, covering themselves and everything. And people knew that you don't go in that area, you see? And that's another thing. Often in society, when there are social problems and social issues, people don't talk about it with outsiders. You see? They will keep them things unto themselves. Now, Jesus didn't need an explanation. So Jesus commanded the evil spirits to leave. Because he is God, the evil spirits knew they had to obey. The demon spirits were even, were even afraid that they even asked him if he was going to cast them into hell before the time. So, so the demons pled it and and back them to let them go into the sun, so the Lord allowed it. But um, what happened next was that the herd of swine became violent and out of control and ran into the sea, into the lake, uh, the, the lake of Galilee. So those herdsmen who herded the swine, they went to, to the countryside and to the city and told everything that happened. And when the people of both the countryside and the city came, they saw the swine, because remember they were drowned in the sea. They were just drowned in the sea, so the, the corpses, the carcasses of those swine were everywhere. And they saw the two demon possessed men at the right mind. And it scared them when they saw that men at the right mind. But the thing interesting is they were more scared of the Lord Jesus. Because remember, Nobody had the ability to solve this issue. Jesus did it, and he, he, he didn't even know that the whole system. In the people's eyes, he was just a stranger, you know. But, but now they asked Jesus to leave their territory, to leave their area. I don't know. Why do people resist deliverance? I'll tell you why. This, though, this history illustrates this perfectly. Whenever there's deliverance, people will have, to, will have to give up their negative expectations of the one that's delivered. Okay, some of you might think that, okay, Rashid, what you're telling now is a little bit, you know, strange. It's a little bit abacadabra for us. Well, I'm going to give a modern day illustration, okay? The following you know, examples I'll be giving are, are things I've made up in my mind, some scenarios, 
but it can apply to your real life circumstances. But just hear me out, okay? Let's say you have a couple that's married. Let's say that the woman was a bit promiscuous before she met her, her husband and got married. And let's say that during their, their, their first years of their marriage, the woman cheated on the man, on her husband. And let's say she became pregnant and had a child, but the child was not of her husband. And let's say the child is now in his 15 years, or well, the child is now 15 years old, and you know it's a girl, let, let me, or a boy. I don't know. It doesn't matter if it's a girl or a boy, but the child is now 15 years old, in his, in his or her teenage years. The parents, you know, have their marital issues because of what has happened, you know, and the family members also know what happened. Now the child of 15 years old, a teenager, realizes that, you know, that, that, that his parents, that his or her parents, you know, are kind of distance towards him or her. Or let me just, just to make the example, if let's say it's a boy, okay, it's a 15 year old guy and he realizes that his father is quite distant towards him and that his mother is, is just, you know, avoidant of the world towards him. Now the, the guy who is now 15 years old, you know, he doesn't know about the cheating and everything, but he realizes something is wrong. But people just don't want to talk about the promiscuous past of the wife. And they don't want to talk about the fact that she cheated while she was married, you know. And they don't want to talk about that, that the guy's father is another man than he thinks that his father is, you see. The guy that's 15 years old has experienced rejection and emotional abuse due to the marital issues of his parents, or let's say his stepfather and his biological mother. Now, the guy wants answers so they can move on with his life. Now, let's say that, you know, the guy wants to find answers. And if, if, if he wants to have answers, then he needs to know the truth. And the whole promiscuity and cheating and marital discomfort around his birth and upbringing will become, will, you know, come, come to surface. And the guy will also realize that the people he talked was were his parents, he, that he thought he loved them, don't love him at all. You know, he, he was, you know, an accident that happened because his mother cheated and the father thought that this boy was his son, but later while well, he was a baby, found out that it wasn't. And now those who killed, they just decided to, because he was already born, they couldn't, the abortion was an option anymore, so they decided to raise him up, to do their best, and make the best of things. So the 15 year old teenager finds out his parents never loved him. You see, this is going to cause a lot of trouble in the family, in the marriage, in, and in the families. Okay? And now not only his parents had to have some explanation to do, also, the other family members that knew about it applied towards the, the 15 year old teenager. You see? So, there is an issue. The teenager experiences rejection and emotional abuse, and is also carrying emotional pain in his life, so the teenager is in bondage. Now, the teenager can use drugs to, uh, uh, to alleviate emotional pain for a while. The teenager can get a girlfriend, just have some sex, and forget about it for a while. Or the teenager can do, you know, can just do sports, okay? So the teenager can just ignore things and pretend nothing's going on, but that they won't solve anything. If the teenager should be delivered, his mother's going to suffer a lot. The parent, his stepfather, we thought was his real father, is going to suffer. The family's going to suffer. Also, other family members. So things might will get out of hand. But is it the right thing to happen? Yes, the teenager is not responsible for, for the circumstances of the years he should suffer because of it. However, if the right thing should happen, those that did the evil, the did it, they will have to pay. So this is the same circumstance, this is not the same circumstance as with the two demon possessed men in Cardenasis, you know, that I've read of in Matthew 8 and Mark 5. But it's a similar circumstance because if a teenager would be delivered, it would have consequences. 
dramatic consequences on his environment that abused him and took advantage of him. You see? And let me give another illustration, for example. Let's say that in a society, you know, you have a group of immigrants who are basically being exploited. You see? Because the people, the natives over there, just are, are a bit lazy, they don't want to work, and now you have those immigrants that they exploit the immigrants. And you have also a little elite in the, in the, in the city that makes, that's becoming rich because of the abuse, because of the exploitation. It's, imagine that you have a guy coming by, you know, a news reporter, and he's exposing the whole thing. It goes throughout all the land, throughout international media, and now the now people from everywhere are demanding justice, and also the immigrants are demanding justice, and the immigrants demand that they, are being, that they will be treated right. Now, in order for them to be treated right, you know, the natives have to apologize and make up the abuse they've done, and the natives have to repent. And also, the natives have to let go of their negative stereotypes that they are holding in their hearts. The natives have to admit they were wrong, and admit they are hypocrites. And also the elite in the city will have to deal, will have to give in the riches they've gained by their abuse. So if the right, if the right things happens, when a group of people or an individual gets deliverance, it will always have, an, have a traumatic impact on the oppressors and those people that join the oppression by benefiting from the oppression. So uh, let me let me see. I gave two, you know, present illustrations of, you know, economic abuse of immigrants and of a teenager that was an unwanted child. Um, I don't know what your life is, looks like, but let me say it like this. You, will, you also need deliverance. People have taken advantage of you in a certain area of your life. And there were others that knew about it, but were too scared and too confident to say something about it. They were, they are, they are, were too selfish. And the advantage people took of you has caused harm in your life. You know, and those circumstances have, may have led that you became addicted, or you had nights without sleep, or that you have other emotional and physical trouble in your life. You see? So let's just admit it. Yes, you do make mistakes and you do make bad choices, however. Not everything that happened to you is because of you. Some of the bad choices you made, you know, some of the bad decisions you made, you made them because there was pressure on you and there were neg there were, you were in the negative circumstances of abuse and people, people just took advantage of it. Okay? So people were cruel and negative towards you. Let's say the Lord Jesus comes into your life and He delivers you. He saves you and delivers you. Those demons, that were around you, they will now go after those that took advantage of you and they will hunt those people. Because that's how it works in the occult film. When you do evil on another human being, when that human being, being gets delivered, those things will return back to the ones that officially did abuse and they'll go in there and they will have, have trouble with, with those things. So it's interesting that the demons themselves of Jesus. Let us go into the swine. Now, the demons knew that those herds of swine were very important for the local economy. The demons were also aware that swine were forbidden animals under the, the Hebrew law, under the Hebrew religious law. So, having a herd of swine itself was something against the local traditions. And swine were, are also wild animals that also carried the diseases. So, having a herd of swine is both against the moral conduct of the environment and also against the health of the public. So, it's basically a, uh, you know, how do I say it, a dirty job. Okay? But the people in that area were benefiting from the dirty jobs that were done in this economy. So, the demons requested Jesus to let us go into the swine. So what they, the demons were really telling Jesus here is that, listen Jesus, you commanded us to leave the, these two men alone, 
you're, you're the son of a god, so we will leave. I offer, please, let us go into the swine. These people around here, they are negative. And those people around here, they've, you know, abused these two men by using them as scapegoats. So, we have all the right to be around here in this area. And so, why can't you just let us stay around? We can, you know, do our thing. So, the Lord Jesus allowed them to go and do that. And look what happened when the demons entered into the swines. The swines became violently and they ran into the only to the lake and they fall, fell in it. And they drowned. Now listen. Jesus somewhere else in scripture also said, Don't give what's holy to dogs, neither your pearls to swine, so that they won't trample them on their feet and turn around and devour you. You see, dogs and swine, those are labels Jesus gives to people who are psychopathic and have no value at all for others, and they're only concerned about themselves. So what should you learn from this part of Scripture also? When you get delivered, those people will only care about themselves. Those abusers, they'll let demons harm them, and those things will go wrong in their lives. And the rest of society will, will notice it. So that's why, you know, a lot of humans resist deliverance. Why? Because deliverance means that the issues should be taken care of. See, often people only want to deal with the symptoms. See? Because often, you know, people just to feel good about themselves, they use scapegoats so that they won't have to deal with their own personal issues. Groups do that, societies do that, families do that, they choose victims to victimize so that they can feel good about themselves. And when deliverance comes, justice will also come. There is no deliverance without justice. Okay? The Lord Jesus will not just get you out of jail without dealing with the people who put you into jail. Whether it's, whether it's where the judges, whether it's where the politicians, I don't care. When you're in an unfair situation where you've been taken advantage of, when the, the Lord delivers you, automatically those who caused the damage will be dealt with. And because you're delivered, the abuse has to stop. And that's that where the thing comes. A lot of singers don't want to give up their claims. So they will become violent. And they will do the their claims. And things will get out of hand. Physically, people will even get killed. You see? And this is something that many churches don't want to talk about. You see? In many churches, you see, when you talk about deliverance, you only talk about, you know, your life being improved, or things will become a little bit better, or you will feel a little bit better about yourself. No. Deliverance, according to the Word of God, according to the Bible, means that you become completely set free from curses and negative expectations of other human beings. And when you get delivered, those human beings will have a serious, pr will have a serious problem, because they so negative they into you and they will immediately they will immediately you know read what they've sown. They will receive the misery they've done unto you. You see, there is no deliverance without vengeance upon the ones that caused the damage. You see, in the case of the, those two men that became delivered, vengeance happened immediately. By those, by that city losing an important, you know, part of their economy, which was the herd of swine. So listen, when you become born again, when you become the when you when you go to deliverance, because deliverance is a process. Expect people to try to enforce their negative expectations upon you again, and try to get you back in the negative state. You see. Don't, if you, don't expect that if you become delivered from drugs, delivered from porn addiction, delivered from low self-esteem, delivered from, you know, suicidal tensions, don't expect that when you, when you become free and delivered that people are going to accept you. No. Often, if you have addictions and traumas, you know, when once you become delivered, people will refuse to hang out with you completely or they will become violent towards you. 
wanting to kill you. Why? Because now they can't use you as a scapegoat anymore. Now they, now they have to deal with themselves. Also, for what they've done to you and for all their other sins. So, saints, listen to this. I'm speaking from experience. No, I, I didn't do drugs or anything like that, but I'm from a very abusive background, you know? I won't talk all about this right now. I think there are a lot of emotional and also physical abuse. You see? However, I'm delivered. The deliverance process was quite quick, but it wasn't easy. And what I've been through, what I, what I can tell you from experience is that once you are delivered, those people, you will realize and you will see clearly who are the ones that took advantage of your hurt and your problems. And those people will realize that you're delivered now and they will realize that you know what they've done and they will either avoid you and run away from you or they'll become all the try to kill you. I'm seriously. So, one thing I'm going to say to the ladies now, ladies, if you have if you have a promiscuous past and you have some and you have a lot of bad decisions that you don't want to think about, listen. You're the let it get be get the uh, let me say repent, become born again, and go through the go through your deliverance process. And once you're out of your deliverance process, make sure that you make new friends, new acquaintances, you get a new family. Don't look back anymore to those people from your past because you will because often those people from your past that took advantage of your best choices, they will do whatever they can to reinforce your past upon you again. And if they can't do that, they will murder you. I'm telling the truth. People should be real. Okay? I'm not going to tell you lies that once your hurt and your trauma and your addictions are gone, or your financial struggles are gone, that you know life's going to be a happy part with everyone going to smile towards you. No. Most most of the so-called friends you have now are only friends with you because they can talk bad about you behind your back and you know enjoy your misery. But once you become delivered, they will be confronted with what they've done and they will take it either out on you or they'll run away from you. But anyway, if people if you if things are co go if things are becoming better in your life, there's a progress and real development in your life, and you know this that there are people during your development that people just decide to leave your life or don't want to talk with you anymore. Be glad because now you know who are the ones that are taking advantage of your suffering. Now you know who are the psychopaths that were in your life. I needed to make this video, I mean this audio clip, because. People need the difference. Everyone, everyone needs the difference. However, few people really realize what the difference, you know, implies and the consequence of the difference. Now, let me say it like this: um, in the book of Acts, I know which chapter now, but Paul, the apostle Paul, arrived at Malta, and while he was making a fire, you know, a, a serpent, a snake, bit him in the hand. He, he just shook the serpent off immediately. And just wants that there's something you guys need to do too. You can't prohibit, you know, being attacked. But once you're attacked, shake it off and move on. Okay? So Paul knew that he was bitten by a serpent, so he shook the serpent off and he placed his head in the fire so that the poison wouldn't spread throughout his body. Now, being bitten, after you don't realize you're bitten until the snake is you know, on your hands. But you will feel it. However, putting his hand to the fire was more painful than the, the attack of the serpent itself. But he needed to go through the fire so that he wouldn't die. So Paul does, puts his hand to the fire and he moves on with his life. Now the people around him, the natives of Malta, said, hmm, this guy is bitten by a serpent. He must be a murderer. The sea couldn't deal with him, but you see, he, is, he has still received his justice here. He's been bitten. Everyone can be bitten by a serpent in, a, in an area where serpents are indigenous. Even little small children. So just because someone is bitten by a snake, it doesn't mean that that's an evil individual. 
But just because some bad things happen to you, that doesn't mean that you're an evil individual. However, often stupid humans have their twisted logic that doesn't make sense. Yet they won't enforce that stupid uh, logic onto you. So now he was bitten by a serpent. They could have warned him of those serpents. They didn't do that because they just wanted someone that they can feel superior to. So when Saul was bitten, I mean, when Paul was bitten and Paul shook it up and put his hands to the fire, they were saying, hmm, he's going to die soon. After a while, days were passed and they noticed Paul wouldn't die. They thought, oh, he must be a god or something. Now listen guys, learn from this. There are people that will be waiting and talking and, and gossiping about you to see your destruction. There will be people that will be aiming and desiring your destruction just to feel good about themselves. And they may be family members, so-called friends, colleagues, you know. They will be people from your own household, from your own inner circle. There will be people that will you know, they will desire to see your doom so that, they can, so that their illusions can be fed. Where once they see that their illusions cannot be fed, that they cannot take advantage of you, they'll lose it. Just like those swine became violent and, and ran into the lake of Galilee and drowned themselves, the same way people would rather drown themselves they would rather commit, commit suicide or destroy themselves than to admit that they were wrong about you. Such people you have, they would rather die and go to hell than have them to face you and, and acknowledge to you, I've been wrong about you, I've harmed you, I'm sorry. So, listen, deliverance, you should go to deliverance because you need deliverance. And remember, your deliverance will not be good news to everyone, but that's not your problem. See, that's their problem because they don't want to repent. You keep on repenting, keep on following the Lord Jesus, and His grace will be with you. See ya.